Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and at whatever time you are watching these series of lectures. My good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. And this is the lecture series under SWAM Prabha and uh, the title of the course of the lecture is Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management. So, if you remember in the uh, last class we were discussing the mainly about the concepts about absolute risk aversion property. I did mention that it can be derived, but I did not go into that. I gave the formula, then I went into relative risk aversion property and then compared what you actually mean by absolute risk aversion and relative risk aversion considering as your wealth increases, how in the absolute terms and the relative terms, relative means percentage terms the investment being held in risk assets either increases, decreases or constant or it is fixed depending on which you can find out the characteristics of A prime and R prime. And given A prime and R prime you can basically understand uh, the four different uh, utility functions we discussed, the quadratic one and I did spend some time on the quadratic utility function considering the concept of normality of returns with respect to R how it is distributed and the relationship if and only if relationship which exists between the distribution R which is normal uh, with respect to utility function which is quadratic. But I did also mention that R uh, in general in a very simplistic case is normally distributed uh, for convenience we consider that. But in general we consider the class of extreme value theorem and extreme value distribution to be true and we can consider that for R and do R practical problems much more in a better sense. And then uh, I uh, very simply discussed how A prime R prime can be derived for all these four utility functions with respect to simple uh, concept of, of calculus being used, differentiation. Then also I considered one step ahead in the sense I I took very simple hypothetical values for W for all these four utility functions and then showed how you can find out U, U prime, U double prime and based on U double prime and U prime and also W, I can find R and A and based on R and A you can find out A prime and R prime. And I did show that many of the actual definitions based on A prime and R prime uh, which were derived using the concept of simple calculus can also be obtained when you used the excel sheet to draw the curves. And I also drew the curves even though it may not have been absolutely clear in, in visibility, but you can do this problems in excel sheet and understand this concept of A, A prime, R, R prime in a much better way. So, this is the 17th lecture and the title I am just again mentioning is investment analysis and portfolio management. We will consider the last part of utility theory. Uh, we have a lot of things to cover till the 18th lecture, fundamental analysis and technical analysis and the concept of forecasting and average techniques. If something is not covered, I will definitely take it forward to the other course um, related to risk analysis. So, under these three broad topics utility I will consider certainty equivalent, the simple axioms of utility functions, how you can use geometric mean return to classify the returns of the portfolio. We will consider the safety first criteria, the safety first principle, consider the shave shaves inequality and also consider the simple concept of stochastic dominance. 
under fundamental and technical analysis we consider the uh, the trend and how they can be drawn i would not be going to the details but just consider how the bullish signals bearish signals bear trap the concept of random walk trend predictions can be utilized how zigzag methodology of movement of prices and all this pictorial information can be analyzed to do a detailed study about the price movement and then third important topic would be about the simple concept of moving average exponential moving average trend analysis adaptive parameter being utilized for single exponential moving smoothing methods the halt linear method which which is suitable for trends and halt winter method which is suitable for trends and seasonality so coming back to the utility uh, function so one important concept in utility function is the idea where you consider the concept of certainty equivalent so certainty equivalent is almost equivalent to the concept of expected value which we consider but in a different way we can analyze and how it can be very nicely utilized to understand the concept of utility functions so the actual value of the expected utility is of no use the values which you get would not make sense because it, they are random outcomes based on some probability distribution so we cannot immediately fathom that how the utility function is important but if you want to compare utility functions certainty equivalent is important hence we use an important concept of certainty equivalent which is the amount of certain wealth risk free wealth that has the utility level exactly equal to the expected value of the utility function which you are considering so if i consider mathematically certainty equivalent would be given by the value c which i am just marking in yellow and consider the example fair gamble and certainty certain issue a certain um, outcome which we consider we'll consider the corresponding probability for the certainty value to be 1 as it, as it should be and we'll equate the expected value of c with respect to the expected value of the utility which you have so utility would have different values as uw1 uw2 depending on the wealth um w1 to w2 and so on and so forth and we'll multiply each corresponding utility with its respective probability and and then sum them up to find out the expected value so this is what is given by the formula where you have uc and obviously there's a one here so i'm omitting that and you find out the utility uwi multiplied by this is the multiplication sign with the probability of the utility for all i and when you equate you can find out the value of c such that once you have the values of c for different utility functions you can take some uh, rational or get some rational idea how can you, you can rank or how you can compare the different utility functions so how is this value of c useful suppose that we have a decision process with a set of outcomes as i said w1 has uw1 w2 has uw2 and so on and so forth with their corresponding probability so let me continue reading it so suppose a, dec a decision process has some certain outcomes with probabilities being given with the corresponding utility values in case we want to compare the decision or the utility which person 1 takes with person 2 or which person 1 takes different depending on different context we can find out the certainty equivalent which is c so that comparison is easier also another reason is to find the exact form of the utility function for a person who is not clear about his or her utility function so what i mean by that i'll come to that within few minutes so consider a simple example you have two you face two options under option 1 which i am marking with red you toss a coin if a head comes you win 10 10 rupees and if a tail appears so obviously correspondingly head and tail probabilities are half and half because it is an unbiased coin for the tail you you win 0 while under option 2 
you get an amount of rupees m and it is fixed. So, there is no probability involved and you consider for simplicity the utility function which I am now marking as quadratic with the value of b as 0 0.04 and obviously, there is a minus sign here. So, in that case how would you find out m? For the first option the expected value would be 3. How would I find out 3? Is that for option 1 there are two outcomes. So, the utility corresponding to the first value for option 1 is 10. So, it will be 10 minus 0 0.04 into 10 square multiplied by half because outcome probability is half plus other outcome is 0 for option 1 0 minus 0 0.04 into 0 square multiplied by half. So, this is the expected value for, for the first case. So, I will mark it as E 1 and in the second case I will use the different color E 2 is equal to because it is a certainty equivalent. So, and I am considering the value as m, m is basically being re replaced in place of c. So, it will be m minus 0 0.04 into m square and the corresponding probability is 1. So, I am not writing it. So, when I equate e 1 and e 2 these two values. So, for the first case when E 1 is found out it, it is found it is rupees 3 or 3 while in the second case as you can see the value is m minus 0 0.048 m square as it is given here. When we equate so I am equating both the value of E 1 and E 2 which I have written down, but I am just marking it again. So, finding out gives you me a value of m as 3.49. So, C is 3.49 because the utility of 3.49 considering the quadratic U2 function the value comes out to be expected value comes out to be 3. So, that means if I keep 3 to plus 49 pesa on one table which is the certainty value and obviously the probability is 1 and on another table you have option 1 with two probabilities half and half values being 10 and 0 with the corresponding quadratic U2 function. We can say that these two values are equivalent in the sense on the on when you are utilizing the concept of expected value they give you the same net worth of the value considering expected value is being utilized. The above example illustrates that you would be indifferent between option 1 and option 2 if 3 rupees 49 paisa was kept, but obviously you may think that how can we differentiate a person who loves risk, indifferent to risk and hate risk that we have already discussed. So, I am not going to repeat it here. Now, suppose if you face a different situation where you have in under option 1 as before. So, option 1 remains the same while under option 2 you get rupees 5. So, that was given as 3.49 now it is 5. So, if I consider that that is not c 5 is not c. So, if I consider the utility it is basically 5 minus 0 0.04 into 5 square because the quadratic utility function remains as it is the expected value is 4. So, 4 is greater than 3.49. So, rather than 3.49 if I keep a keep a value of 4 rupee and other on the left hand side option 1 continues to be true then obviously, if a person is trying to analyze these two situation based on the concept of expected value he or she would definitely consider the value of, of 5 to be much better because considering quadratic utility function the net worth of the value of rupees 5 comes out to be 4 while for the other one it is basically uh, 3 that 3 value which I found out in the last slide where the expected value of the utility the option 1 was given. Now, if I go back to the venture capital problem venture capital problem being uh, the government one where it was 10 lakhs and there is only one outcome other situations were basically given for 3 probabilities 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and the corresponding utility was w to the power half. So, if I consider that problem for the venture capital problem the certainty value for option 2, option 2 is basically the 
the three options which you have, three outcomes, that value comes out to be 3,70,881 as if we find out the expected value of 3,70,881, it is this and remember the, the utility function was square. So, if I basically have this 1, which is the probability which I will write on do not write does not matter, but I just wanted to mention it. So, that value comes out to be about 609 and 609 if you remember was the expected value of the venture capitalist considering he has 3 options uh, under option 2 to invest with probabilities 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and 0.4. So, any value greater than uh, 370,881 would mean that the person would definitely be interested to take that certainty value, not the venture capital decision where there are three outcomes. And if the value is less, obviously, if, if we consider the concept of risk aversion, uh, risk um, uh, loving and all this concept for the time being we remove and we are only considering the expected value. In that case, a value of 3,70,881 less of that would mean the person would definitely go for the, the case or option 2 where there were 3 outcomes. So, we are only com com comparing based on the expected value. Now, if I put it in words for the risk averse person, risk neutral person, risk seeking person, the ideas would be like this. For a risk averse person, he or she will select an equivalent certainty event rather than the gamble because as we know the person has a has the utility function as increasing at a decreasing rate. So, obviously, I am I want to run away from risk. So, I will take the situation where the probability is 1 and I am I know the value of C which would give me benefit always and not the gamble because I would be thinking as a risk averse person thinking what if the downside uh, situation arises whatever the probability and if it is a fair gamble it will be half and half. So, if the value is less then obviously, the risk averse person would make a loss and, and, and he wants to avoid that. A uh, risk neutral person which is now clear which is increasing uh, uh, at a constant rate he will be indifferent while continuing the this logic for the risk seeking person he will definitely seek the gamble rather than the equivalent certainty value because the uh, the second derivative is greater than 0 because utility function is increasing at an increasing rate for the green one it is increasing at a decreasing rate u double prime is less than 0 for the blue one it is increasing at a constant rate u double prime is equal to 0. Now, how would we consider that we can get some idea about what type of util function the person has. So, let us do a, a simple thought out a simple experimentation and that should give you some idea that you can understand what type of utility function the person has, whether the utility function is increasing or constant or decreasing. By the word increasing, constant, and decreasing, I mean that uh, risk averse person, risk uh, neutral person, and risk seeking person. So, I have a Cartesian coordinate where in along the y axis I measured the value of c, I note it down. What I do, I will come to that within few minutes. On the x, x axis, I note down the expected value. So, how I find out the expected value? So, that I also will discuss. And I draw a line which is 45 degrees for simplicity. So, 45 degrees technically would mean that the utility function is w. How I do that? Let us consider. Case 1 consider a simple example. I take two values A and B, some values which are known to me. 
and I know the utility function is basically W and the probability of getting A and B I am tossing a coin which is unbiased so it is half and half. So, if I consider the expected value which I am now marking on, on the x axis the value would be A plus B by 2. So, it is the midpoint and let me draw a vertical here. Now, where it cuts that 45 degrees line let me also go horizontally onto the left. So, mark that value as say for example, C 1 and this value green which is there where I have taken A and B value. Let me mark as C for example, A 1 plus B 1 by 2. So, this suffix 1 is being used to make things simple as I change the cases. So, the point where it meets the 45 degrees line it is like this. This 45 degrees line is in the sense that I keep on one table a value of A 1 and, and B 1 and I say the out probabilities are half and half and the util function I know it is W but I do not know what the util function for the person to whom I am going to ask the question is I do not know that. And on the other table I have kept a value C 1 such that the utility function of C 1 obviously it will be C 1 because the utility is W is equal to half of A plus B A 1 plus B 1. So, it is kept there on the table the person enters these two values are shown A 1 B 1 probability half and half and C 1 with probability 1. The person can give me three answers either he selects C 1 he says the second option is that no he is not happy he would like to have a value of C which is more than C 1 such that for him or her in only that case the expected value of A 1 B 1 would exactly match the higher value of, uh, of C which is more than C 1 which he or she wants and another case can be he would definitely like to take that gamble where the outcomes of A 1 B 1. I do not know again I am saying I do not know anything about the utility of that person. So, the, that, that point which he mentions to me the value of, of so called C 1 star for him. So, let I will put a star value which basically means the other person's answer. So, that C 1 star can be either more than C 1 which I know for myself it can be below C 1 or it can be exactly C 1. So, I note it now. Next what I do is that I change A 1 B 1 to A 2 B 2. I know the expected value for that uh, fair gamble is A 2 plus B 2 divided by 2 corresponding to that I also keep a value of C 2 on the other side. So, C 1 has now been replaced by C 2 because A 1 has been replaced by A 2 B 1 has been replaced by B 2. I again ask this person again remember I do not know the utility function of that same same person. Again the person gives an answer no for him or her it is not C 2 it can be either C 2 star which is more than C 2 it can be less than C 2 or it can be exactly at C 2. So, again I mark it down third instance I change A 2 B 2 to A 3 B 3. Simultaneously I change C 2 to C 3. I again ask the same question which uh, decision would the person take the fair gamble or the certainty value which is kept which is C 3. I do not know the utility function of that person the person gives me an answer say for example, C 3 star. Now, C 3 star can be either above C 3 exactly equal to C 3 or below C 3. So, if I keep repeating this question to that person slowly I will have three types of graphs. In case the person has always been giving me the answer no he wants a certain value such that C i star i, st I means as I keep changing 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4 that means A 1 B 1 being changed to A 2 B 2 being changed to A 3 B 3 so on and so forth and correspondingly C 1, C 2, C 3 is also changing which is being done by me. 
So, if the values of C i star for that person are above this 45 degrees line, I know I will have a curve which is like this. So, I am just drawing at a certain point. In case the person is always giving a me answer, the C i stars are exactly equal to C i's, then I know it will be exactly beyond the 45 degrees line. So, it can be this and the third case can be the person is saying no the C i stars what he wants for himself or herself depending on the changing values of i, the C i stars are below C i. So, in that case I know the response of that person is like this. So, again I am the person who is changing A i B i as each instance with probability half and half is a fair gamble corresponding as I change thinking the utility function is w I also keep changing C i's and I ask that person which decision we will take he or she will either be equivalent to these decisions or would want a value of C i which is greater than C i being replaced by C i star or is less than C i being replaced by C i star. So, C, C i star if it is more or less these are just variables which I use. Now, when I draw and obviously, you would have understood that the graph which is the green one is equivalent to this type which you have already drawn and seen many times. So, this is the case where I have a utility function is basically increasing as an in decreasing rate. So, the person is trying to avoid risk, risk averse person. For the second case which is blue one, if I see this, it is basically the util function is increasing as a constant rate. So, the person is indifferent and if I see the third case which is red one, the util function is increasing at an increasing rate. So, the person wants to take the risk is risk loving person. So, by this simple example, even though you can read a book to get a better understanding what I mentioned, but in a very simple way. I can at least understand what is the overall risk propensity or what type of characteristics the person has even if I do not know anything about the utility function of that person. So, I just done a very simple example a very simple experiment in order to understand how the utility function can be fathomed and you can get an idea of the person uh, to whom you want to uh, uh, from whom you want to get some answer or some knowledge that what type of utility function he or she has. So, this is what I will read. So, I have explained it in as simple words as possible. I will just read it and clear if uh, I think there are some concepts to be made a bit more, more uh, lucid. So, A and B are the wells. So, I mentioned A 1, B 1, A 2, B 2 that is has the values of, of w because for ease of analysis as we know we have considered the utility function as w that is why the 45 degrees line. You form a lottery such that an outcome of a has a probability p, but I did consider probability p and 1 minus p as half and half for simplicity. So, it is better to consider probabilities and half and half as a fair gamble so that we can make things much easier for us to understand. So, it has a probability of p and the other outcome b has a probability 1 minus p. So, here what you can do also do is that change the values of p and ask the investor how much certainty value will he or she have in a place of the lottery. This lottery means a and b the fair gamble in our discussion. Thus, c will vary with p. Now, the expected value of the lottery as we know for our case what we discussed in the last slide was half into a plus half into b. Here it is p into a into 1 minus p into b. A risk averse person will have a value or a risk loving person will have a value or a risk indifferent person will have a value such that c 
would be less than this expected value equal to the expected value or greater than expected value depending on what propensity or what characteristics of risk property the person has. You plot the values of C and you already have be based on the expected value of the lottery which is uh, for, for this example which is being discussed is P into A plus 1 minus P into B which was in the last slide discussed as in a very simple sense half into A plus half into B and based on that you plot and I did discuss the green line, the blue line and the red line which will give you the idea that person wants to avoid risk, is in indifferent to risk and wants to take the risk. Now consider a, a different type of, of a problem you want to understand. Suppose we know that the utility function of that person for an example is exponential form, but I have no idea what is the parameter. So, the parameter needs to be estimated. So, let me mark it. Suppose you know that the form of the utility function is minus e to the power minus a w and I need to find out a. So, how would you basically estimate that or have some idea? You ask the person that given a lottery which has a 50 50 chance, probability half and half. So, there are two values one given as 10 lakhs, another is 1 lakh. And you ask him or her that in order to buy this lottery, what is the price he or she is willing to pay? Because the person obviously considering uh, the situation of the person would like to earn more, but he will only be willing to pay that price such that the overall expected value of the lottery based on the fact that his utility function exponential with some value of A, A I do not know, he or she must have some idea. So, the person says, well, I will pay 4 lakhs. So, in that case, it means that if I pay 4 lakhs or if he pays 4 lakhs or she pays 4 lakhs, considering that this is the certainty value, the expected value will be given, which I mark in red. And the gamble, if we know 50 50 chance, half and half. So, that expected value would be I mark in, in blue would be half into e to the minus e to the power 10 lakh into a because that was one outcome plus half into minus e to the power minus 1 lakh into a because that was the other outcome. So, I keep changing the values of the lottery and the person keep, keeps giving me those values which is 4 lakh it may change or increase depending on how 10 lakh and 1 lakh are being changed. So, we, when we solve iteratively, we will get different values of A and you can at least understand or have some idea about the overall estimated value of A should be for that person. So, what are the simple axioms of utility? So, an, an, an investor he or she can always rank for two uh, decisions either A is equal to B or A is greater than B or A is less than B depending on what uh, utility the person perceives that, that decision to be. Second being that I can rank uh, the utilities even though in many of the cases for multi credit decision making it may not be true. So, if A or decision A is better than decision B and B is decision B is better than decision C. So, obviously, I will always consider A to be better than C. But as I said, multi criteria cases may not be true because their one to one comparison may not hold because you are considering a host of such other um, characteristics for alternatives uh, based on which you take a decision for the alternatives. The third being consider there are two, two decisions where x is equal to y uh, value wise, then assume we can combine x with another decision z such that x is with probability p and z is with the probability 1 minus p. On the same line, we compare combine y with z. So, the correspondingly the probabilities of y and, and z are exactly the same p and 1 minus p. In that case, adding or subtracting a net amount 
to x and y would still keep that decision balanced. So, it is like a weighing machine you have x and y on, on the two weighing pans and you add and subtract another decision z with the corresponding probability concept which has been mentioned. So, you increase or decrease of the expected value on the left hand side and the right hand side considering I am giving an example as a weighing balance continues to be remain the same. And for every gamble there is a certainty equivalent such that the person would be indifferent between the gamble and the certainty value because at that point the person is sure that the expected value coming out from the certainty equivalent amount based on the utility which he or she thinks is true for him or her would be exactly the same as the expected value of the gamble. But obviously the certainty value would change from person to person because utility function would keep changing from person to person depending on his or her risk appetite, age, then income and all these other um, characteristics. Now, few important points I want to mention. CAPAM which is capital at asset pricing model provides the optimum solution. I am not going into the details of proofs and discussions. Provides the optimum solution if investors have quadratic utility functions and I did mention fleetingly about the concept of distribution of R and the utility function. And we also did discuss share price are log normally distributed because based on that concept I found out or did discuss that R is equal to ln of P2 by P1 where P1 is the ending price of today and P2 is the ending price of tomorrow one day later or one unit time later. Now this is a very simple example obviously there are much more rigorous proofs for that. So, what I do is that I compare the mean variance concept with the utility function provided the utility function has quadratic form. So, if you remember I had been mentioning if and only if condition. So, that is the concept I am trying to explain. So, I could have basically considered the theoretical proof, but I omitted that. So, please bear with me. So, consider we have three assets and the prices are given. So, assets are A, B, C and the prices are as given in the second column, third column, fourth column. So, based on second, third, fourth I find out the returns capital R for A, capital R for B, capital R for C. So, if I want to find out the return for A which is 1.10 shown here it is basically 110 divided by 100. So, I am fine utilizing capital R. I could also use small r. Similarly, when I use b and find out the return as 1.09, it is 115 by 105. When I use the return for c, which is 1.13, I use the ratio of 90 by 80. And the corresponding probabilities are for the simple case given as 1 fifth. Now, this is what I do. I find out the average return hence for A, B, C which I mark as R bar A. So, sample average concept I mark B as R bar B and I mark C as R bar C the corresponding values are 1.06, 1.05, 1.14. 1 so, do not be too much bothered about the units I am just using the values and even if I use the units of percentage the concept would remain the same. Based on the returns R I can also find out the standard deviation. So, technically these standard deviation actually should have been sigma hat here for A which is 0 0.025, sigma hat for B which is 0 0.022 and sigma hat C which is 0 0.052. And I consider the average wealth given, I can change the values are given as for A is 114, 119 and 100. Now, if I consider a risk free interest rate is there which is 0.5, then I want to find out the excess return of that particular decision A, B, C or script A, B, C with, with its corresponding risk. So, I am trying to find out the ratio of excess return divided by the risk. So, remember the same concept risk can be beta, risk can be sigma and so on and so forth. 
based on that when I find out for B simple normal concept I am using normal distribution. Then the ranking corresponding to the fact that I am using the normal distribution would be this. So, B decision is better than A is better than C based on the fact the values are 25.0, 22.4 and 12.3. So, because standard normal concept has been used. Now, let us keep aside normality and let us consider quadratic. So, the quadratic uter function with a certain value of b is given where b is 0 minus 0 0.002 based on that when I put them in the value of a b c utility I can find out the expected value, expected value how do I, I find out the probabilities are given and I multiply them with the corresponding utility for A, then separately for B and then separately for C. So, when I do that, the ranking also comes out to be B is better than A is better than C. But obviously, the values per se 90.68, 88.01 and, and C80 may not match that when I use the normality. But the important fact remains that the ranking system which I get using the normality concept and using the quadratic review function would give me the same result. Obviously, there are rigorous proofs again I am mentioning one can utilize and understand the concept in depth. Consider uh, another example. The util function is given as quadratic w square plus w and outcomes in scenario 1 and 2 are given in column 1 and column 2 with the corresponding values in column 1 starting from 15 to 25 and column 2 values starting from 20 to 30. Wealth values are given in quantums of 0.5 such that it starts at 1.5 and ends at 4. So, if I plug these w values into the utility function that means 1.5 whole square plus 1.5 comes out to be 3.75. Then when I multiply 2 square plus 2 which is 4 plus 2 is 6, 2.5 whole square plus 2.5 comes out to be 8.75. Similarly, for 3 it is 12, 3.5 it is 15.75 and 4 it is 20. When I utilize, utilize the corresponding probability based on the outcomes which are the number of, of instances which, which agrees to that uh, outcome in scenario 1 and scenario 2, total number of scenarios is 212. So, if I find out the ratios that is given or the probability or the relative frequency that is given at the last column. So, once we plug them, we can find out the expected value of the utility and solve the problem. So, here there are two scenarios based on which you are trying to understand what is the expected utility. This is a very simple diagram. So, on the left hand side I have a situation. So, where there are, are wells w 1 to w 4 we can consider these are utilities also given by u 1 to u 4 even though I have not written u 1 to u 4. Corresponding probabilities are given from p 1 to p 4 and obviously remember the sum of the probabilities is 1. So, if I want to find out the expected values, I will basically multiply and sum them up for p i into u i. So, u i is basically the corresponding utility for w i. Now, that will be equivalent to the situation where I consider those utilities of u i's which is u 1, u 2, u 3, u 4 have been broken down into gambles with the corresponding probabilities of h 1 and 1 minus h 1 and the outcomes being b 1 and 0. So, I am not going to the utilities of b 1 or the utility of 0. So, what it means that I can equate the, the value of w 1 based on the fact that there is some utility. So, I am not writing u equivalently. So, that would basically be equivalent to h i into b i plus 1 minus h i into b i into 0 sorry. 
So, you replace that with the utility depending on the utility you can formulate the problem where h and v values can change or h i and v i's values can be changed. Also this concept can be further extended where one can write. So, rather than this gamble I can have the situation which is the deterministic case where probability is 1 I am not writing it I can replace that with say for example c such that the expected value of c certainty value will be exactly equal to these two different situations how they have been constructed provided obviously we are thinking that we want to balance or make the expected value for all such decisions equivalent or same. So, there are other portfolio selection models also what are these? One is expected utility maximization that is prefer more to less and another is the concept of risk aversion I want to avoid risk. Even we have other forms of utility function also yet quadratic approximation that is using the mean value theorem does give us good results which are more practical. But uh, as you will see nowadays uh, in place of normal, normal distribution you can use the student t distribution or other extreme value distribution which will give us better practical results. People do have other criteria also for portfolio selection. So, uh, few of important ones are the geometric mean return, safety first criteria, stochastic dominance concept and analysis of returns of characteristics of the return distribution as such. Geometric mean return. For the selection process, the concept we use is basically we want to maximize the geometric mean. This is the general concept we follow. So, reason being that the highest probability of reaching or exist exceeding any given wealth level in the shortest possible time is, pos is there when we want to maximize the geometric mean. So, if you remember central tendency can be considered we know arithmetic mean, median mode are there uh, under the uh, using the same concept of arithmetic mean we do know the concept of harmonic mean and the geometric mean can be utilized and, and geometric mean is utilized when we want to find out the so called average of the returns uh, which will give us the same value for fluctuating returns with respect to the concept of this fixed value of the return. Geometric, geometric mean also ensures the highest probability of exceeding any given wealth level over any given period of time. So, these are just bullet points notes and, and, and uh, take away points for the discussion without going into the detailed rigorous proofs or understanding for them. So, how do we use the geometric mean? I will consider a very simple example. Consider we are we know that p suffix i j is the probability of the ith outcome for the jth portfolio. So, there are different portfolios marked from j is equal to 1 to capital J and under each portfolio you have assets which are marked by small i starting from 1 to capital I. So, if you have that so, if I want to find out, so those portfolios are different, I want to rank this portfolio. So, capital Ri is the ith possible return for the jth portfolio. So, if I want to find out the geometric mean, it will be 1 plus R1j. So, if I keep changing the jth portfolio, j is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. So, the corresponding value of the, of the geometric mean would be 1 plus R. R is basically the possible return by concept based capital R and small r whatever we are considering. It will be R, R 1 plus R 1 j, j is 1 to the power P 1 into j multiplied by 1 plus R, R uh, 2 j to the power P 2 j. So, this 1, 2 uh, or 3 whatever I am talking or j is changing from 1, 2, 3, 4 to capital J are all in the suffix. So, I may not be mentioning them time and again, but please bear that in mind. So, the third um, um, this term would be 1 plus R 3 j to the power P 3 j and so on and so forth. 
till the last term which is 1 plus r n j to the power p n j. So, I am considering there are n number of, of um, assets minus 1. Why this minus 1? Because if you remember we have small r is equal to i 1 minus i 2 divided by i i 1 minus i 0 divided by i 0 equal to i 1 by i 0 minus 1. So, r plus 1 is equal to capital R. So, this we all know. So, if I consider plus 1 to be taken on the right hand side, it becomes r minus 1, that is why I am utilizing the concept as minus 1. Consider we have the following combination of assets A, B, C in the following ratios to form portfolio P. So, the returns for them, I am considering fixed returns are 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent for A, B, C respectively and for portfolio 1, 2, 3, the combinations which are kept for A, B, C are as follows. For portfolio 1, the percentage are 20, 20, 60. So, double check it adds up to 1. For portfolio number 2, it is one third, one third, one third for A, B, C. Again, double check it is equal to 1. Sum of, of, of one third, one third, one third is equal to 1. And finally, for the case for portfolio 3, the, the, um, the combinations of assets A, B, C are 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.5. Again, it add, adds up to 1. So, there are 3 portfolios. Each portfolio has assets A, B, C, returns of assets A, B, C are fixed for the time frame when you are considering and comparing 1 to 3, but the com combined ratios of A, B, C in portfolio 1, portfolio 2 and portfolio 3 are different as I just mentioned. So, let us consider the concept of uh, geometric mean ranking. So, when I put that in the formula of R P 1, R P 2, R P 3, so P is basically the suffix corresponding to the portfolio and 1, 2, 3 is basically the portfolio number 1, 2, 3 as mentioned. So, when I utilize that formula without going into details, I have already discussed that for the first one, the value comes out to be 23.7. So, I should mark it with red color for better understanding. So, the, for the first one, it is basically 23.7. For the second one, it is 19.7. And the, for the third one, the value is 22.2. So, as 23, as 23, which is for 1, is greater than 22.2, these are in percentage sense, which is for 3 which is better than or greater than 19.7 which is for 2. So, when I rank them it will be 1, the portfolio 1 is better than portfolio 3 is better than portfolio 2. So, this is the overall decision which I can get for portfolio 1 to 3 considering geometric mean concept is being utilized few other important concepts without going to rigorous discussion proofs. Maximizing geometric mean return is equivalent to the concept of maximizing the expected value of the log utility function. So, if you remember I did discuss maximizing the utility when you consider the quadratic utility function was also akin to maximizing the, the returns when it is um, normally distributed. So, that point which I have been mentioning time and again. So, in this case when you use the geometric mean it is equivalent to maximizing the expected value considering the log utility function which you have already considered another of the utility function. The second bullet point is portfolio that maximize the geometric mean returns are also mean variance efficient if returns are log normally distributed. So, when you are considering the mean variance considering the normality and, and the, or, or we did consider the concept of you read the paper of Markovich. 
So, the concept of normality or uh, spherical distributions were, were important. So, when I am considering the geometric return um, and are also and they are also mean variance efficient. So, in that case returns are not log normally distributed as is considered the case for the two important concepts which I kept mentioning the prices are log normally distributed thus you can find out R as L n P 2 by P 1. So, under the safety first principle the basic tenant is that the decision maker is unable or unwilling to consider the utility theorem for making his or her decision. Under this methodology people make their decision placing more importance for bad outcomes. That means, I as a person if I am making a decision, so I would be unhappy with a loss of 100 then the quantum of happiness with a gain of 100. So, I am more at a loss for a same quantum of loss in value terms. So, 100 loss would make me more unhappy in quantum sense than if I have gained 100 rupees. So, that is the basic essence based on which we are discussing. So, there are three important concepts which we will consider for the safety first principle. The first one is that we want to minimize the probability of Rp less than Rl. What is Rl? What is Rp? I will come to that. The second one is maximizing the uh, uh, fixed value of return RL and RL can be replaced by RF which is the risk free interest rate, I will also come to that. And the third bullet point is maximizing the average value of the portfolio RP. So, here I even though the diagrams would be there, but still I will like to draw a detailed one considering normality to be true, obviously this concept can be extended for non-normal distribution also, but for simplicity and for ease of understanding using the concept of z table or z uh, standard normal table, I will try to draw it here. So, this is the x axis which I consider the returns r. So, r are being me me measured here. So, I will use r whether p or l or uh, um, f it is immaterial, it is just return. And I consider that I have a return distribution which is normal. Again I am mentioning the graph concept will be coming up again later on. So, here I write down important points. So, this is the average value of the portfolio which I mark as R bar p and this is the distribution of r p which I consider as normal with the mean value of r bar p and a standard deviation or variance of sigma p. Technically I should have written a sigma hat um, square p, but still and I will consider another value which is given here. So, that can be on the left or the right immaterial for the time being, but it will make sense when I come to the concept of, of return to be positive or negative or loss or profit. So, consider this is R L or equivalent to R F whatever. So, the first point is minimization of a probability of R P less than R L. So, what we aim to do is this. I want to minimize the overall area which is covered onto the left hand side, because if I consider this distribution corresponding to the gains. So, if I go on to the right hand side more it increases, which means I intend to note that R is increasing on the right which is better for me. Any value onto the left that means, it is less than the risk free interest rate with the bank is given. So, obviously, I want to minimize that area which is shown in yellow color here. So, this is the first point which is mentioned here minimize the probability that means, take it as small. Third one is basically maximize R L that means, I try to shift or, or, or push R L more to the right which means that I am risk averse. So, I want my overall portfolio in such a way 
that I want better returns based on the fact that RL is increasing. Better RL is increasing good, but I want my returns to be better than RL. So, that is another way of trying to maximize my overall portfolio value. And the final case is when I lock stock barrel shift the overall distribution on to the right. So, if I draw it in dotted lines what I intend to do is I want to shift the average value of the portfolio in a such a way that it will move on to the right. Hence, the average value of R p bar which is there now shifts from R p bar in the first stage first stage to the case of R p bar in the second stage. So, I am shifting it there that means, the overall average return of the portfolio is increasing I, I, I want to be much more sure. So, with this I will close this lecture and continue in the discussion in the subsequent one and try to come back to the concept which we have we are still left with before we come into the areas of, of option theory and anything which I miss I am I, I, I really apologize because the discussion was quite intense and I did try to discuss a lot of topics. So, anything any any leftover would be carried forward in the next course which can be considered as a as a continuity of the portfolio analysis class. Have a nice day and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.